Hello and welcome to part two of my extended tech, extended uh, object properties tutorial. And I left you off at the point where I showed you how to texture a sphere or any object, basically. That's how it works. So in this tutorial, I will show you how to create a texture, which is even more interesting. And simply, let's create our same variable text, text. And let's write cre create texture. And in brackets, it takes two parameters, the uh, width and length of our texture. Now let's just make it a square texture, 300 by 300, which is uh, a normal size check texture, I guess. And here, as you know, set buffer. We won't set it to the, our back buffer, but here we set it to our texture buffer. And what this does is it sets our buffer to our texture buffer, so we can draw right now onto our texture buffer. And then when we get to the flip code, it flips everything back to our front buffer onto our screen. So that's basically what we're saying. We're setting our buffer to our texture buffer. And now let's just... Oh yeah, I don't think I've showed you this command before. CLS. And CLS clears the screen. And here if I write CLS color, this will basically form our background texture. Oh, yeah, and here, texture buffer, we're going to want to show them that we're modifying our text, texture. That's just one detail I forgot to add, CLS color. And here, we're just going to specify our background color of anything that's not drawn. So clear texture color, text, and let's make our background color green. Just completely green, no, like, crazy stuff or anything. So CLS color text, green make everything, our background color for our texture green. And, oh yeah, we're probably going to want to make our sphere a bit bigger. bigger. Let's just make it on 1.5 as if of its original size. And here, CLS color text. Now we just want to clear our screen again. And here I will teach you a new command, how to make a, actually font, a font. And all you do that is just font equals load font. Now, a font takes, uh, sorry, five parameters. First, it's the font, it's either times or Arial, whatever you want. I'm going to use times for this one, New York Times, and then comma the pixel size, or just the size, 20, 12, which is the original size, 15, whatever you want. And then it takes three Boolean variables, and Boolean variables either contain a value of true or false. So that means... This, it's either, this is bold, this is italic, and this is underlined. Now let me just move that over so you can see it. Each one of these can be replaced with either true or false. Uh, to make it either true, bold, or false, italic, or underlined, we can make that true. So it's just basically like a formatting palette kind of stuff. But, and if you don't want to include a last value, then just don't even put a comma before that. So let's just, I'm not even going, I'm going to make it bold actually, so it would be times comma 15 comma true to make our text bold. Well, now we just created our font and loaded our font of type times and size 15 pixels, and we make it true on bold. And, yeah, so... Now we want to set our font, since this is just, uh, we create a variable font, and now we want to set it. To do that, you just want to put a uh, new command I te I'm teaching you, it's set font, and then the font name, set font font. So now, our everything that, every text command that we use will be written in the font that we defined right here. And yeah, so now let's just make our text command, text. Uh, let's make it 225, comma, 200, comma. And here are, goes our text. I'm just going to say, hi, YouTube, and a couple exclamation marks. Exclamation, yeah. And let's just, 220, I think that would go better. And yeah, so now we created our, and defined our text texture. And after that, all we need to do is say, entity texture. Uh, sphere, comma, text. 
which is basically the same thing except now we just define our cool little texture that we have here. If you run this program, it says too many parameters. Now let's see what that means. Uh, oh yeah, sorry. I forgot one parameter here, and it's the color of our text. So to define that, it's just color and 0, 0, 255. So we're defining our color to be blue. So we draw this high YouTube text in our blue color. So yeah, once you've done that, let's just run it. Too many parameters. Let's see what line we have here and VLS color. Hmm. Oh my gosh, wait, wait. Sorry, uh, here we didn't even actually need the text too many parameters. Just delete that. Sorry about that misleading text there. And now, voila, we have our sphere with our high YouTube text on it. So, hi YouTube. And if we actually wanted to rotate our sphere, you would see that it's actually just pasted onto that surface of the sphere. And uh, if we want to rotate our sphere, I'm just going to show you a quick command. If key down, let's 203, which is the left key, then turn entity sphere. And now let's just turn our sphere on the was. Now let me explain something here. Turn entity command turns on axes. So that means if we put a value on the x axis, which goes left to right, it would rotate around that axis. And on the y axis, it would rotate left to right like that. And on the z axis, it would just rotate forward and backward, but so we're, if we want to rotate left and right, we're going to have to put a value on the y-axis. So let's put negative 1 since that's our left arrow key, and now let's just put make a right arrow key, hit the key down, 205, then turn entity sphere, comma 0, comma 1, comma zero. And now, if we actually ran this program, we could use our left and right arrow keys to move this sphere, to rotate this sphere. And any moment, the Hi YouTube text will appear. Hi YouTube! Awesome! Alright, so that was just turn entity as a command. And there's really rotate entity, and that rotates your entity. And if we actually change this to rotate, take, sorry, take, entity, rotate. And we ran the program using our shortcut key F5. Look what would happen. It would just rotate some kind of minuscule amount each single time we put our, we pressed our left and right arrow keys. So we're going to want to keep it at turn entity so it would actually turn, not just rotate. It's on a small degree. So keep it on turn, and I just taught you two new commands, rotate and rotate entity and turn entity. And that was basically it for my texturing tutorial. That's end of them. And in the next couple of tutorials, I will actually be going through how to create a terrain, and how to make your sky, and how to make it look nice. So, yeah. Thanks for watching, guys, and see you in my next tutorial.